Hello students, in this video we'll consider the commutator of two matrices. Let's be given two n by n matrices A and B. And what we're going to do is we're going to define their commutator, their bracket, call it bracket, by the bracket of A and B is A times B minus B times A, okay? And so, of course, one thing we can immediately notice from this is that this is defined in such a way that A and B commute with each other if and only if their bracket is zero. So note, AB equals BA, namely A and B commute, if and only if their bracket is zero. That's usually a trivial consequence of the definition, right? And so let's discuss some other properties of this bracket operation, right? And so, of course, what are some properties of this thing? So the elementary properties of this bracket, there are many properties, right? So here's property one. Property one is that it's linear in the first and second slots, right? So let's do this. So I have a, I have a lambda A plus a matrix B bracket with C. I claim what that is. That's going to be lambda the bracket of A and C plus B, the bracket of B and C. Of course, the proof of one is relatively straightforward, right? So how do you prove one? So proof, the left-hand side is gonna be what? It's going to be lambda A plus B times C, and then minus C, and then lambda A plus B, which is equal to what? Which is equal to lambda AC, and then over here, it's going to be a minus lambda CA by pulling that out, and then plus BC, and then minus CB over here, which is going to be lambda, the bracket of A and C, plus the bracket of B and C. And that proves that it's additive and that's it linear in the first slot. So this is linearity in the first slot, linearity in first slot. Okay. And we'll come back to linearity in the second slot in a second, but let me prove the next property, which is skew symmetry, right? And so skew symmetry is trivial, right? Skew symmetry states that the bracket of A and B is negative the bracket of B and A. And the proof of that is trivial, right? Right? Just take this relationship over here and factor out a negative sign, right? Factor out a negative. Okay, great. So it's skew symmetric, and then finally we have the Jacobi identity, right? So the Jacobi identity. And so what does two imply? So by two, we automatically get that you're linear in the second slot, right? Lambda, and then A, B plus A, C. So you're linear in the second slot. And so finally, three is the Jacobi, or four, I guess in this case, is the Jacobi identity. And so what does that say? So that says that if I look at the bracket of A with the bracket of B, C, plus B dot the bracket of C A plus C and then the brackets of A and B that this will give me the zero matrix. Okay, that's the Jacobi identity. So let's prove it. So of course this takes a little bit of elbow grease over here. So let's do this first thing over here. So let's look at these first terms over here. So the first terms over there are gonna give me a what? Are gonna give me an A and then B C minus C B and then minus B C minus C B applied to A. Those are the first terms over there. Let's look at the next terms over here. So what are these terms gonna give me over here? These terms over here are gonna give me what? Are gonna give me a B with C A minus A C. And then minus C A minus A C with B. Those are those middle terms over there. And these final terms over here are going to give me what? Are going to give me a plus C, and then AB minus BA. 
and then minus AB minus BA with C, okay? So let's expand these things out one by one. So we're gonna have a what? Over here, I'm gonna get, that's gonna give me an ABC minus an ACB, and then a minus BCA plus CBA. Good. These terms over here, if I get them out, are gonna be a plus BCA minus BAC, and then minus CAB, CAB, and then plus ACB. And then these terms over here are going to give me a what? So are going to give me a CAB minus CBA and then minus ABC, ABC, and then plus BCA, plus BCA. Now let's one by one cancel these things out over here and see what's going to happen. Over, let's see what happens over here. So I have an ABC over here and a negative ABC over here. So those terms are going to cancel out. That's great. Let's see, I have a negative BCA and a positive BCA, those terms cancel out. Let's see over here, let's do some more. I have a back over here and a back over here, they're opposite signs, so those cancel out. Let's see over here, where's the R cab relationships over here? I have a negative cab and a positive cab, so the negative cab and positive cab will cancel out, right? And let's see over here, let's do the last couple ones. The last couple ones are gonna be a negative CAB and a CAB positive. So those will cancel out over there. And then finally, the last things we have over here are this negative ACB and the positive ACB. So those will cancel out as well. And that just gives me the zero matrix over here. So that's the Jacobi identity. In other words, all I've done here is I've just sort of cyclically permuted, I've permuted everything one step to the left in this instance over here. I've shifted the B to the first lot, shifted the C over and pushed A to the other side. So you can see this is a cyclic permutation of these things, right? And in general, any sort of cyclic permutation over here is gonna work in the same fashion over here. So that's Jacobi identity. One final thing to note over here is that the final property I wanna mention is that this is property number five. And now what's the trace of this thing? What's the trace of the bracket of A and B? The trace of the bracket of A and B is the trace of AB minus the trace of BA by the linearity of trace, right? But I know the trace of AB and the trace of BA are equal or the same, right? So the trace of this thing is equal to zero. So this thing, this AB minus BA, is something that has zero trace. In further videos, we're gonna try to understand the equation A bracket B is equal to C and the Sylvester the Sylvester matrix equation gives me necessary and sufficient conditions when the bracket of A and B is equal to a matrix C if and only if the spectrum of A and the spectrum of B are destroyed from each other. Thank you very much.